Inukshuk's Wish Chapter 1 The Week Before Christmas It was the week before Christmas, and Kinsville was bustling with activity. The W shop was full from morning till night with shoppers, all trying to find that perfect gift. The Kins post office was sending out hundreds of thousands of packages a day. There was baking and decorating to be done, parties to prepare for, and, most importantly, the secret Santa Kins breakfast to look forward to. The secret Santa Kins breakfast was at Fluffington's mansion, and it was Inukshuk, Nunavut's favorite part of Christmas. Each resident of Kinsville had been sent an invitation to the breakfast. In the invitation was the name of a friend that the recipient had to buy a gift for. At the Santa Kins breakfast, everyone would secretly place their gift under the big Christmas tree, and then, after eating lots of pancakes, waffles and toast, each Webkins pet would find their name on a gift and open it. The best part was guessing the identity of everyone's secret Santa Kins. Inukshuk was so excited because he got to play secret Santa Kins to Chef Gaspacho. Inukshuk, of course, had no idea who would be playing secret Santa Kins to him. He simply couldn't wait to find out. After all, that was his very, very favorite part of the holidays, giving presents to his friends and getting presents for himself. Chapter 2 Christmas Eve Morning Inukshuk worked morning, noon and night, helping Miss Birdie at the adoption center. He wanted to earn enough Kins cash to get Chef Gaspacho the best gift he could think of, a new sandwich maker and food to cook with. By Christmas Eve morning, Miss Birdie was very impressed with the amount of Kins cash Inukshuk had earned. It's all worth it, he grinned, putting on his coat. I'm going to get my secret Santa Kins the greatest gift ever. Good for you, Inukshuk, Miss Birdie said as he opened the door to leave. But remember, presents are only part of Christmas. Don't forget the other parts. OK, Inukshuk agreed, thinking of what wrapping paper he'd use. I'll see you at the breakfast tomorrow morning. Inukshuk headed for the W shop. Along the way, he waved and smiled at everyone. This time of year put him in a really good mood. Plus, he wanted to be sure that no matter who was supposed to get him a gift, they'd get him something great. Being nice to everyone in Kinsville would ensure that Inukshuk would get the most awesome gift ever. The W shop was so crowded that Inukshuk had to push through the crowd to get to the kitchens and bathroom section. He found the sandwich maker and was on his way to the cashier when he ran into a group of his friends. They were all carrying awesome gifts, except for Maddie the Good Fairy. All she carried was a ball of yarn. Chapter 3 The Best Christmas Ever Hey guys, Inukshuk grinned. Check out the awesome gift I got my secret Santa Kins. Ooh, Dr. Quack said, looking at the sandwich maker. It's wonderful. Looks like your secret Santa Kins is going to get a good gift, too, Inukshuk remarked, noticing the new scooter in Dr. Quack's wing. And yours, too, Inukshuk said to Plumpy, who was holding a bathtub battles game. Inukshuk eyed the blue ball of yarn in Maddie's hand. I hope that's not the gift you're giving your secret Santa Kins, he scoffed. A ball of yarn? Who would want a gift like that? Well, Plumpy interrupted. We should get going. See you tomorrow, Inukshuk. The three friends headed toward one cashier, and Inukshuk went to the other. All the way back to his house, Inukshuk watched the other Webkins walking through Kinsville, carrying large packages, wrapping paper, and bows. Everyone seemed to have purchased the nicest, largest items they could afford. Inukshuk wrapped Chef Gaspacho's gift and attached a card that said, From your secret Santa Kins. He went to sleep that night and dreamed of what kind of humongous, expensive gift he might get from his secret Santa Kins. When the sun came up, Inukshuk bounded out of bed, got dressed at the speed of light, grabbed his gift for Chef Gaspacho, and ran to Fluffington's mansion. It was officially Christmas Day, hopefully the best Christmas of Inukshuk's life. Chapter 4 Inukshuk's Gift Inukshuk ran up to Fluffington's door and rang the bell. He could hear the party from the porch. As Fluffington opened the door and welcomed him, the noise grew louder. There were Christmas decorations everywhere. 
Inukshuk hurried into the living room and saw the biggest Christmas tree he had ever seen. Underneath the tree were piles and piles of presents, all signed, Your Secret Santa Kins. Fluffington had prepared a huge breakfast. Everyone in Kinsville sat down to a table laden with waffles and cream, pancakes and syrup, and fresh fruit salad. After eating the delicious breakfast and drinking sweet tea and juice, everyone gathered around the tree, and Fluffington explained how the secret Santa Kins would work. I'll pass out the gifts, Fluffington began. When everyone has received their gift, they will open it. When all the gifts are opened, everyone will guess the identity of their secret Santa Kins. Ready? Ready, the crowd cheered. In no time the gifts were distributed. Inukshuk watched excitedly as Chef Gazpacho exclaimed over his sandwich maker. Chef Gazpacho caught Inukshuk's eye and smiled. From you? he asked. Inukshuk nodded. It's wonderful, Inukshuk, thank you. Almost all the gifts were opened. Inukshuk held his present in his paws. The moment he had been waiting for had finally arrived. Sure, the box was lighter than he thought it would be, but he knew something wonderful was inside. He closed his eyes and prepared to open the gift. Chapter 5 A Plain Old Hat Inukshuk removed the wrapping paper and opened the small box. Inside was a layer of tissue paper. He held his breath. He lifted the tissue paper off and saw... A hat. A plain, old, boring blue hat. If Inukshuk had looked a little closer, he would have noticed that the hat had tiny sparkles interwoven between the knitted rows. He would have realized that someone had carefully stitched every stitch. He would have realized that the color of blue matched his mittens perfectly. But unfortunately, he did not look a little closer. Inukshuk just saw a plain blue hat. At that moment, Plumpy came over. What did you get, Inukshuk? she asked. Nothing special, Inukshuk said, stuffing the hat back in the box. Come on, show me, Plumpy smiled. Inukshuk could see what she got. An Egyptian lamp. That was a good gift. Nah, Inukshuk said. Dr. Quack wandered over. Hey, Inukshuk, what did you get? Nothing, Inukshuk said, hiding the box behind his back. You got something, Miss Birdie grinned. Leave me alone, Inukshuk cried. It's nothing special, it's just a stupid blue hat. If Inukshuk had looked behind him, he would have seen Maddie's wings droop and her smile fade. He would have seen the tears in her eyes. He would have seen her fly quietly out the door into the cold winter air. Instead, he threw the hat on the ground and stomped out of the living room. When Plumpy tried to go after him, he simply turned and growled, Leave me alone. My Christmas is ruined. Chapter 6 The Worst Christmas Ever Inukshuk stomped home and slammed the door. I worked hard all week to get my secret Santa Kins a good gift, he stormed. Whoever bought my present didn't spend any time or Kins cash at all. They just gave me something ugly and boring. Inukshuk was so busy being angry that he did not notice the crowd standing on his porch until his doorbell rang. He stomped over and threw open the door. He was face to face with Miss Birdie, Dr. Quack, Chef Gazpacho and Plumpy. Inukshuk! Plumpy began. What was that all about? What was what all about? Inukshuk demanded. You just stomped away from the party, Miss Birdie reminded him. Didn't you see my stupid Santa Kin's gift? It's awful. I was too embarrassed to be seen with that hat, Inukshuk growled. Maddie worked hard to make that hat, Dr. Quack said angrily. You hurt her feelings. Maddie? Inukshuk exclaimed. She was my secret Santa Kin's? Yes, Miss Birdie said. If you had stayed for a moment longer, you would have realized that. But you were too busy yelling about how much you hated your gift. A cold block formed in Inukshuk's stomach. We brought you the hat, Chef Gaspacho said. It's a wonderful gift. But you got a sandwich maker, Inukshuk said. That's a far better gift. I like my present, Chef Gaspacho admitted. But if you had made me something with your own two paws, I would have liked that too. It's not about the amount of Kin's cash you spend, Plumpy smiled, handing him the hat. It's about how much your friends care about you. See you tonight, Dr. Quack smiled as the four friends left. 
Inukshuk stood in his house alone. It definitely didn't feel like Christmas Day. He knew what he had to do. Chapter 7 Maddie's Secret Inukshuk arrived right on time at Fluffington's mansion for dinner. He felt kind of embarrassed to face all of the friends who had seen him have a meltdown earlier. His friends were polite enough not to mention it, though, and instead just complimented him on his lovely hat. Yes, even though he still didn't like it very much, Inukshuk wore the hat. He knew it was the right thing to do. When Maddy flew in, she saw the hat perched atop his head. Her lips curled into a small smile. Maddy, Inukshuk began walking over to his friend. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. Maddy's smile grew. It's okay, she said. I understand. It wasn't what you expected. That's all right, Inukshuk said. You made it yourself. You don't really like it very much, do you? Maddy asked, sensing that Inukshuk still wasn't crazy about the gif. Well, before Inukshuk got to answer, Fluffington interrupted. Take your seats. Christmas dinner is about to begin. Everyone scrambled to find a seat around the long banquet table. Come on, Inukshuk said, taking Maddy's hand. Sit with me. They found two seats together and got settled. I have something to tell you about your hat, Maddy began. The thing is that appetizers are being served, Fluffington announced. Maddy sighed. She had to tell Inukshuk the secret. Chapter 8 Inukshuk's Wish For ten minutes the room was filled with eating sounds. Maddy cleared her throat and tried again. Inukshuk, your hat is special because... Main course! Fluffington hollered. For an hour everyone was so busy exclaiming over the food that no one talked about much else. It was getting late. I have to tell you about your hat, Maddy began. Dessert time, Fluffington said giddily. Dessert was his favorite course. As the pies were being served, everyone waited in silent anticipation. As the servers reached the middle of the long table, there was an audible gasp from Fluffington. We're out of pie, he wailed. Everyone was upset. The pie was legendary. Ah, oh, that's too bad, Inukshuk said. I wish everyone had pie. Suddenly the perfect number of pie pieces appeared on the table. Inukshuk gasped. His wish had come true. I wish everyone could have a cup of tea, he said, wanting to see if it would happen again. Just like magic, a cup of tea appeared in front of everyone. Inukshuk, wait, Maddy said, as he was about to make another wish. You're about to make your third wish. What? Inukshuk said, puzzled. It's a magic hat, Maddy grinned. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It gives you three wishes once a year on Christmas Day. You've only got one left, and you've got to make it a good one. I wish... Inukshuk began, I wish everyone had a friend as wonderful as Maddy. And I wish for a wonderful new year in Webkin's world. Well, Maddy smiled, that's two wishes technically, but I think they might just come true. Merry Christmas, Inukshuk. Merry Christmas, Maddy, Inukshuk said, hugging his friend. And thank you for my wonderful hat. <laughs>